Welcome to the Making You, an accurate reflection of Christ's podcast, where you become translucent glory. Now here's your host and glory teacher, Karen Pina. Kingdom greetings. Here we are today, another episode, and we're going to be talking today about why I do not use the title doctor, DR period, why I am not using it. We're going to talk about, I'm not selling anything. In business, degrees and titles are esteemed by the world. And in ministry, heaven's rank and glory is the prize. So this is an episode that is great for people who are credential-aholics. That's right, credential-aholics. You know the type. They have the PhD, the MBA, the DBA, the PFQ, and every other (laughs) three-letter alphabet abbreviation after their name, as if that is going to convince us to do business with them. Come on, let's dive in and explore why I don't use the title doctor. I'm not selling anything. As you may or may not know, I have over 30 years experience in business and ministry. And while in the business realm, I learned a lot about selling. In fact, I sold leadership coaching services for 13 years. Then father ushered me into the office of apostle. And when he did, it changed everything. And I mean everything. This ascension into this office is the absolute toughest thing I've ever done. And let me tell you, I have been through a thing or two. But everything pales in comparison to ascending into this office because there were so many things that needed adjusting mentally, physically, and relationally, one of which was my sales, advertising, and marketing approaches. I had to be completely retrained from all of the things I had learned. I had to be detoxed from the 30 plus year experience that I had in corporate America. I had to adopt new ways of conveying what he's offering through me. While this may sound like very subtle and nuanced changes, let me tell you, they were not. Let me share a story to illustrate what you are learning. The other day, my husband and I was watching a believer market a program on social media. And it started off very powerfully with the interpretation of a dream. And then it shifted into the offer. I mean, the language centered around, you can't resist this. You don't want to resist this. You don't have a long time to decide. If you decide right now, you'll get X and Y. And if you don't decide right now, you will miss out. Next came the close. Grab it, snatch it, pick it up before it goes away. Get it straight away. 
When you do, you're going to receive three bonuses valued at some astronomical price. Mm. I turned to my husband and I said, you know, this sounds like one of those cheap infomercials on TV for some pots, pans, or plastic kitchen gadgets. <laughs> wow. Sadly, I could see how this approach cheapened this high value program the believer was offering. So we prayed for this believer. I told you, every time you come on this podcast, you're going to hear the word prayer. Why? Because we pray a lot. Mm. And if you're going to be in business, you might want to borrow a chapter from my book. So I prayed because I was touched by what I heard. And I start reflecting on a younger version of myself when I was 20, 30, 40. And you know, I had some of the same approaches because it was how I was trained. I picked up these sales and marketing tactics from business coaches and trainers in the industry. I picked it up from my training in corporate America. I didn't even realize that I sounded like a cheap infomercial when offering our high impact leadership coaching programs until father caused me to become more apostolic. I'm telling you, there is nothing like when father unveils something to you that you've been blind to for, oh, far too long. Mm. And this was our prayer for this individual, and it's our prayer for you, listener. Wow, I'm praying for your eyes to be opened to how you sound to others who have and who have not received training and coaching in sales, marketing, and advertising. I'm praying this way because the truth is people know salesy jargon when they hear it. And guess what? Most complete people, most people that are whole, they don't like it. Think about a time when you knew that you were being air quote sold something, how did it feel? That's what I'm describing. So I'm praying for you to become more apostolic, which in its simplest definition is to become all things Christ-like. The simplest way, the simplest form, breaking it down to its most basic and rudimentary and elementary form, apostolic is becoming all things Christ-like. Let me ask you, can you see Jesus saying this? I'm going to be teaching on the mountain today and I'm going to feed 5,000 people with two fishes and a small lunch donated by a little boy. Now listen, 
You better beat me to the mountain so you can grab your meal because I don't know when I'm going to perform this miracle again. But if you want to see me work this miracle, then you need to start making your way on foot to the mountain so you can grab your meal because when it's gone, It's gone. When I miraculously feed these 5,000 people, that's it. And you'd be completely out of your mind to miss it. However, if you want to stay stuck in mediocrity, then go on. Go ahead and pass up on this offer. (laughs) See how off my father this sounds? But this is exactly what many believers in business sound like. And I am coming into your listening device to tell you I'm not selling anything anymore. I'm showing up. I'm meeting the needs. I'm not selling anything anymore, including any titles, because degrees and titles are esteemed by the world. That's right. In business, degrees and titles are esteemed by the world. One day in prayer, Father told me to go back to school for my doctorate degree. And that wasn't what I wanted to hear. And when I heard him say this, I had been out of school for several years and I was debt free. Now, if you know anything about securing higher education degrees, master's and doctoral level degrees, you can spend anywhere from the low $50,000 mark for the master's and upwards of $120,000 for the doctoral degree. So I was not looking forward to heaping up that kind of debt when we had been debt free for almost two decades. At the same time, it had always been a dream to teach at a local university. So you know me by now, I obeyed and I enrolled in this program. And the whole process was really miraculous, seeing as how the pursuit of the degree that he told me to get was completely unrelated to my master's degree. The enrollment process went very smooth. I experienced peace about this decision for a short while. Then one to two years into the program, I absolutely hated it. Let me tell you why. I'm extremely professional and detail oriented and I follow instructions very well. My background in scribal calling positioned me to excel in this program. And I am the type that prays before I do anything. So I prayed prior to completing every assignment. I prayed before writing my doctoral thesis. However, every time it came to get some feedback from the professors, I dreaded it. I dreaded the feedback because I didn't like the fact that many of the instructors didn't even read the homework. Moshanama. Instead, I received some generic critique. 
I didn't like the fact that many of the instructors didn't have a clue as to how to do what they expected me to do. I resented the fact that other students in the class did the bare minimum, turned in homework at the ninth hour and remained in the program with far less quality of work than what I was churning out. Wow. And one day I received feedback on chapter one of my thesis and I pushed back. The professor responded and let me know that the feedback was based on the criteria for how to write the doctoral thesis at another school where she taught. Even though she apologized, I was utterly exhausted at this point by all the changes and all the inconsistencies while in the program. So you know what I did, right? I cried out to God. I prayed about all that I was experiencing. And he spoke and said this. Karen, it's okay to adhere to APA formatting standards and the school doctoral handbook, but these things have become idols for many in this institution. He continued to share and he said to me, I want to reveal how I honor you. And he had me write a letter and put it in a forum with everything that I had experienced for the past two years in the program and all the things that frustrated me. In less than a week, the school closed down. And this school was a pioneer in online education for many, many years. The doors simply closed abruptly. And father spoke to me as clear as day. And he said, I honored you and the other children that I have in this institution. And I shut it down down. Yeah, I purposely took a long pause so that you can wrap your mind while around what took place. Instead of honoring me with a piece of parchment paper, he revealed how he, wow, how heaven sees and honors me versus how the world bestows honor. He showed me a glimpse of the authority that he's given me. Right after this, he says, I don't want you to use the title doctor. It is not to be lifted above any title in my kingdom. Moshebeah. Immediately, I shifted apostolically. And an apostolic shift can be defined as leaving behind 
everything of the world to become more like Christ. An apostolic shift is becoming less worldly and more like Christ. It is about decreasing my father so that he can increase in you. So, in short, the title doctor and a doctoral degree is valued by the world. It's valued in business. For example, that doctor's and business administration degree is necessary when I secure a position teaching at a local university because it's how the world qualifies and esteems you, but it is not, wow, important in the kingdom. It's not important in ministry because in ministry, heaven's rank and glory is the prize. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 teaches us that there is a season and a time for everything, everything. And when I was working for the world and holding traditional positions, it was the time and it was the season to use the title doctor. (laughs) If that is what he wanted me to do. But remember what we're talking about today. We're talking about why I don't use the title doctor and I don't use it because apostle or prophet or whatever your ascension gifting is, mm, is esteemed higher than any title or degree or credential that the world has you pay for. (laughs) You pay for it. No one's giving you anything. Wow. Now you pay in the kingdom too. You pay in the kingdom too. But it's an eternal price. Wow. Sila. Sila. So there's a time. There's a season to use the title doctor if that is what God is allowing you to do. Now, I'm in apostolic business and ministry right now. And quite frankly, that title is not relevant. No one cares. Even when We were coaching for 13 years. I never had one client. My husband never had one client ask us, where did you go to school? Are you a licensed coach? No one cares. So you can have every title, certificate, and credential imaginable. You can have your MDiv, your PhD in theology, your MBA or your DBA, At the end of the day, only one credential will matter. The credential that comes from being acquainted with glory. Has he crowned you with glory according to Psalm 8 and 5? That's what's important. What's important is, do you know how to articulate what your crown looks like? Can you tell me when he placed it on your head? 
Do you know how you rank in the heavenlies? Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? Is the question posed in Acts 14 and 15. I will never forget when Father revealed to me how heaven honors me. I can't forget that season from November 2017 to February 2018 when he crowned me. Now, mm, I esteem the greater riches of Christ's kingdom. Excuse me, you all. I esteem the greater riches of Christ's kingdom more than the treasures of Egypt. And boy, it took the Hebrews 1126 kind of faith to not use the title of doctor over here on this side in ministry. Oh, it was not easy because my flesh loves the sound of Dr. Karen Pina. On the other hand, my spirit loves to hear all the unknown names that he's given me based on Revelation 19, 12 through 13. I tell you, mm, our father has names and titles that you have not even heard before about yourself. And we can see this when we look at Jesus, who is always our example, because he has a name above all names. And he has so many titles like man of war, lily of the valley, the lion of Judah. And you are created in his image. And every name and title that he's given you reveals how heaven has honored you. And there is no piece of parchment paper on this earth that could ever equate to this. And there are no man-made titles that equate to leading in God's kingdom. Mm, made me drop the mic. <laughs> And if you wanted to learn more about titles not equating to leadership, pick up the making book. Wow. I tell you, I am after the prize of glory. I'm after the high calling of heaven, not the highest degree in some secular institution. Mm. Wow. Wow. The link for the making book is bit.ly B I T dot L Y slash make me an accurate reflection. That's B I T dot L Y slash make me an accurate reflection. And the first letter of every word there is capitalized. I know that this episode is challenging you. I know that this is not popular amongst professing Christians. I know that you are being challenged to examine the titles and the tactics mm, that you are using to prosper in business and in ministry. Beloved listener, you are so much 
more valuable to heaven than to be online and offline talking like and writing like some cheap infomercial. There is so much that he wants to reveal to you about your heavenly rank and your prize in glory. And you can discover it in a class that I teach called Release the Glory. The next one's being offered sometime in the summer. You can go out to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash register, release the glory. Capital R for register, capital R for release, and capital G for glory to find out all the specifics. So this is why I do not use, wow, the title doctor. In my prayer in closing is that you have been set free from selling and marketing your services or your ministry like some cheap sales person just to get someone to follow you or buy what you are offering. Karen Pina here, your host and glory teacher signing out. Thanks for listening to today's podcast. To discuss and learn more about this episode, join your glory community at Bitly Glory School Community. First letter of the words are all capitalized. Finally, be sure to sign up for the RSS feed to know when the next episode is uploaded.